Hi guys, Randall here. This Wednesday, we are getting the Brachiosaur VC and Esper combination. They are fire missile oriented, so very much tailored towards Setia, but there are a couple other units that could use it. Uh, while I think this is a really good vision card that will provide a lot of damage for a unit like Setia, uh, there is the issue that it doesn't solve her accuracy problem. So if you want to use it to compete in PvP, it's not necessarily the best vision card to go for. Uh, the Esper is also quite niche. Today what we'll do is we'll take a look at the stats as a primary VC, as a secondary VC, where they could shine, and then talk about whether it's worth investing into it or not. I think both the individual and party ability of this vision card are pretty good, but not that many units will actually benefit from it heavily. Uh, first of all, the unit using the VC will have 30% extra acquired AP, very useful if you're a physical attacker that doesn't start with a lot, 10% more at attack, which is okay, but VCs can go up to 30% there, so it's not incredibly high either, and then some fire attack up. We don't know the value just yet, as this is a global buff, it doesn't have it on the JP side. I'm leaning towards 20 because that's typically what we get, uh, and if that's the case, it will provide quite a massive boost to damage, so that would make it a pretty good individual uh, slot VC. Uh, for the party though, it only gives you missile attack, which is not going to impact a lot of units in the fire squad. Uh, we'll take a look at which units can actually leverage that, uh, but it is quite a limited amount. Uh, the agility up 8% and 20 single target resistance, however, are really good. Uh, units like Star Elena are typically using single target attacks a lot, uh, and that's what we see um, in quite a few units in the meta. And then Fire also has the Death Machine uh, vision card that provides you with 20 AoE resistance, so if you stack the two of them, there's no way to bypass either. You'll have to deal with either single target or AoE resistance. As a secondary VC, you do get quite a bit of a drop in stats. I think in the individual slot, it's still a fantastic vision card because the acquired AP 30% goes down to 24%, which is still pretty high. You still get roughly 4.6% attack, some fire attack up, we don't know. Uh, what the initial value is, it's hard to compare. Uh, but it, as a party ability, you do lose on quite a bit. Uh, the missile attack goes from 37 to 17, and then as I said, there aren't that many missile fire attacker units that can actually benefit from it, so it's not as valuable a stat as some others might be. 4% uh, agility will be pretty good though, and then the single target resistance goes down to 6, which at that point, there is quite a small chance that it will actually allow you to survive an extra hit. It's such a small number that I don't think it's going to impact too much. Now as for units that will benefit from it, naturally Setia will, it is designed around her, but also Winter Mashery, very bulky, can typically walk into a fight with 8000 HP, 1400 attack, and has the ranger's sub job with Barrage, so she will benefit from, uh, from this with her largest AoE attack. You could go Lilith, she's an MR unit, she's extremely slow, but she does have the ranger's sub job, Barrage, and a couple other things that could potentially pair well with Setia. Or just go with Luartha, once she gets her EX job, it is actually quite a good one, she's gonna have significant amount of damage especially if you are going to be targeting ice teams now fire should normally beat them uh, but she does that exceptionally well so I could see some play for her uh, but then the single target resistance part will also be quite impactful on the rest of your team so if you're running a tank like King Mont or like rain well it will allow you to tank a couple more hits uh, against some enemies like Sarth Elena for example that are mainly focused on single target attacks uh, could also be good for the same reason on Regalia Glaciella. As long as they're not getting hit by AoE attack, it does give everybody on your team a little bit more survivability. Now, one reason I'm not as big a fan of the VC as I would otherwise be is because the missile attack is limited to only fire units. And I feel like if you want to run a missile fire comp, you we don't quite have the tools for that. A lot of players might not have pulled for Winter Mashery or don't want to invest in somebody like Lilith, which leaves you with uh, Luartha, who, as somebody who does not have access to the sniper sub job, uh, sorry, ranger sub job, does not have guaranteed hit, so suffers from the same weakness as Setya does, and also doesn't have the ability to lob over map. So she has to have an actual line of sight with her enemy uh, in terms of height, which can be a bit of an issue. Uh, so it's not going to be very easy to build a team that leverages the VC fully unless you have some of these units built. And if you want to use it in a rainbow comp, uh, what I would probably do is use Setia with Frederica and Ornivlu to mitigate her water weakness. Well then you're probably just going to slap the Efrit vision card on Setia, Frederica's dream on Fred or Niv, and then have missile attack for all of your team and attack up for all your team, in which case you're not using uh, this VC. Uh, so next, let's take a look at the Esper, and I think he is actually a very interesting Esper, mostly because he's a fast one. At 17 agility, he is one of the fastest Espers. He still has a decent amount of HP, decent amount of attack and dexterity, uh, but yeah, mostly you'll have a very fast Archer. 
Uh, some charm resistance will be useful in some manual game modes, but typically, even no matter game, which game mode you're playing, charm attacks are typically low range, so chances are you'll have gunned down the enemy before they reach you, or they could kill you, or charm you doesn't really matter at that point. It does give a little bit of fire, uh, sorry, ice resistance and water weakness, which is expected of an elemental esper. The evocation ability is interesting. I don't think it'll see that much play because the Esper is designed around being a missile attacker, so hitting from very far away, and the evocation ability is just around yourself, so you know you have to be at a very risky spot in order to use it. It is, however, a very high mod at 240% uh, strike attack that none of these units have access to normally. That is a guaranteed hit, and then it will increase the AP consumption of the targets you hit, which is a fun effect. It's not something we see very often. It then decreases fire resistance, increases attack for everybody, so if you do lend it, it's a very solid effect. It might just kill your enemies, and if it doesn't kill them, it severely cripples them. Uh, but the very short range means I don't think the ability will be used at all. In terms of Esper nodes, it's definitely an offensive-oriented Esper. He gives 15 missile attack, 25 fire attack for a total of uh, 40 attack if you're a fire missile attacker, which is as high as basically any Esper gives. 7 accuracy is fairly low though, a lot of Espers go to 22, and when you're a unit like Cydia that doesn't have any way to mitigate uh, the lack of accuracy, I don't think you'll run this because you need the accuracy that Odin or Zoo or some other Esper would give you. I get 7% attack, some crit rate, dragon killer, ice killer standard stuff at that point and then on the defensive side you gain 15 magic resistance which again paired with Setia on a unit that has 30% base and then can use a buff that gives her 20 more percent going to 50 uh, with this Esper she would go to 65 magic resistance which is very very high uh, water resistant not so much a factor the Esper gives you a 10% weakness so even if you go all in on these nodes you only get 5% water resist it's not the best way to get water resistance in the game and then 7 evasion is usually not enough to matter that much so if you're going for the Esper you're really going for an Esper that has a good amount of agility and then provides you with fire and missile attack that's really what he's there for so overall, I think this is a very niche pick. First, it is not time limited. So just like the Golden Araman, you don't have to pull this now and you might naturally pull it. Now, because VCs are not on the same banners as units and typically you just have to do five steps to get the VC you need, uh, it's pretty hard to pull off banner VCs. If you do plan on building ranged fire units eventually down the drain or you want to use the Esper for some reason, I still recommend you go for it now because chances are you won't pull it for the next couple months. I just very recently pulled Carbon and it's been out for a pretty long time. Uh, it will be very strong if you find some ways to make your fire team accurate and uh, you're using ranged attackers, then it will be a really good way to increase your damage, survivability, and agility all at the same time. So the stats are really, really good, uh, but the applications where you'll actually run this are quite niche, which means uh, it might not be the best investment unless you have very specific plans. And then, yeah, the Esper seems underwhelming. I would probably not use it even on Cydia because, again, the accuracy. If you're targeting unaccurate teams, though, it will provide you with the highest amount of damage. With all that said, I am personally going to pull for it because I did get Sitya, I was very lucky and got her in two pulls, and so I want to try to make her as strong as can be in some teams, I'm planning on potentially running her in manual teams, uh, and I feel like having the, uh, the vision card as an option in fire teams will be fun. I also have Winter Mastery, I plan on eventually EXing Lilith, and I do have King Mont and Regala Glaciella in the making, so I'll have the means to leverage it. Uh, but for many accounts, I think it might not necessarily be the best investment, as I just said. Uh, but let me know you guys' thought. Are you excited for the vision card for the exclusive bonus, or did you really just hope it would have an, a global exclusive accuracy up buff that would potentially make Cydia more viable? I would like to hear your thoughts. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you soon.